Hello everyone, this is Ryan King, and if you've seen me on the internet before, then that's probably from my main YouTube channel, Ryan King Art, where I create Blender 3D tutorials. And I run my main YouTube channel, Ryan King Art, as my full-time job, and so I spend a lot of time on the computer. And that brings me to the topic of this video, which is digital eye strain, and what I do to manage my digital eye strain as a YouTuber and 3D artist. So because I spend so many hours working Working on a computer, I've dealt with a lot of digital eye strain over the past two and a half years, and it's actually been a big issue for me. And I do remember dealing with some eye strain in the past when I was younger, but it's been much worse just within the past two to three years. But over the past two to three years of dealing with eye strain, I've done lots of research and I've tried many different things, and I've seen different eye doctors, and I have found many things which have helped to manage my digital eye strain. Because I pretty much had some amount of eye strain all day when I was working on the computer as a 3D artist and making all of my YouTube videos. And sometimes it would just get so bad that I would have to take a few hours break in the middle of the day, or it would sometimes get really bad, and I'd have to spend a very limited amount of time on the computer for a few days until my eyes felt better, and then I could keep on working again. But after implementing all of the things which I'll be going over in this video, I've been successfully able to manage my eye strain to a much more tolerable level. And that is exactly why I'm making this video, because I'm sure there are many other people out there who may deal with digital eye strain, because in this modern world, we look at screens for many hours every day and I especially do because I'm a 3d artist so I use the computer for my job but then you know we're watching TV watching movies we're looking at our phone many of our entertainment sources come from screens as well and so with so much time looking at a screen I'm sure there are many other people who deal with eye strain as well but because I've learned so many things over the past few years I really want to share my experience and I feel like it's my duty to make this video and put it out there because this is the kind of video that I wish was out there a couple of years ago when I was was dealing with eye strain. It took me a long time to figure out all of these different things which really helped to manage my eye strain. So I wanted to make this video simply to help out other people who may be dealing with the same thing. So I'm going to have timestamps in the YouTube timeline if you'd like to check out each part. But if you are dealing with a lot of eye strain, then I would highly recommend watching through the entire video because each one of these tips may really help you out. So the first thing that I'm going to be going over is what I think the root cause was for my eye strain. And so it was an absolute game changer once I figured it out. But there are many other things which also helped with my eye strain, so after the first part I'll be going over all the other things that I find that help. Now just a quick disclaimer before I continue with the video, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor or an eye doctor, so just keep that in mind as you're watching the video. I'm just a 3D artist and YouTuber who spends a lot of time working on computers, and later in the video I will talk about my experience with seeing an eye doctor and the things that I figured out to avoid my digital eye strain, so you could definitely consider seeing an eye doctor if you're having a lot of digital eye strain, uh, but I'll be going over that later in the video. Alright, so I'll now go over the most important thing and the biggest thing which helped my digital eye strain, and this is really the main reason why I wanted to make this video. So as I mentioned earlier, I did deal with some eye strain when I was younger, but then just over the past two or three years, my eye strain got a lot worse. And I just recently realized that my eye strain got much worse when I had purchased a new monitor. So I noticed my eye strain getting much worse in the spring of 2021 and when I look back on my calendar I had written down that I had just purchased a new monitor and it was just around the same time that my eye strain got much worse. Although at the time I didn't make the connection between my eye strain and getting the new monitor because I already had some eye strain previous to that but it just got much worse. So the symptoms that I've had when I've had really bad eye strain is that I feel like my eyes are really irritated and I feel like it's hard to focus on the screen and I even feel like when I'm looking at a computer screen, it's making my eyes irritated just looking at the screen. And I've also had lots of pain all around my eyes, and it feels like the muscles around the eyes, which actually move the eyes, those muscles feel like they're aching. And when my eye strain gets really bad, I kind of feel like an aching feeling all around my bones, so kind of around my cheekbones, and kind of all around my eyes, and then of course all around the eyes. And then I've also had kind of like a stinging feeling or burning feeling actually in the eye. And I know some people also complain of getting headaches. I haven't really experienced that many headaches when I have eye strain. That's just not really a symptom for me. But I have read online that many people also feel like they get headaches when they have eye strain. 
Now back to the new monitor which I had purchased a few years ago. So how I figured this out was because I was actually on Reddit and I was looking through some Reddit posts regarding eye strain and I was seeing if other people were dealing with the same issues. And so I'll have a link in the description to the Reddit post that I found, but basically the guy who wrote the Reddit post was having eye strain and he had two monitors. Now one of his monitors wasn't causing him eye strain when he was using it, but then when he was using the other computer monitor it was causing him lots of eye strain. Now I believe it was on accident, but what he did is he happened to look at his monitors through some polarized sunglasses. And they weren't regular sunglasses, they were polarized sunglasses. And that is very important for what I'm going to talk about in a moment. So he looked through his polarized sunglasses at the monitors, and one of his monitors was really dark tinted, looking through the polarized sunglasses, and the other monitor was perfectly clear, so he could see everything on the screen. Now the monitor, which was the dark tint when he was looking through the polarized sunglasses wasn't causing him eye strain. However, the other monitor, which looked clear when he was looking through them with the polarized sunglasses, that monitor was causing him eye strain. And so what he did is he actually rotated the monitor by 90 degrees, and some monitor mounts have like a rotation so you can actually make a vertical monitor. And so he rotated the monitor by 90 degrees, and by rotating it by 90 degrees, it also became a dark color. And you can see that this monitor here is dark colored, but then when I rotate the polarized sunglasses by 90 degrees, you can see what's actually on the monitor. So when the guy rotated his monitor over by 90 degrees and then worked on it, all of his eye strain went away. And luckily I do have some polarized sunglasses and so I did the exact same thing. So I put on my sunglasses and I looked at the screens and sure enough the main monitor which I had been using for two and a half years, it was the monitor that I purchased when my eye strain got worse, that monitor was clear when I'm looking through it with polarized sunglasses. Now I have a four monitor setup on my computer. I have four monitors because I make Blender 3D tutorials. So I want Blender up on one screen and then I want like my script on another screen. And then I have OBS, which is my screen recording software. And then on the last screen, I usually have some reference images. So I like having four monitors. And so when I looked at my setup, two of my monitors were the dark color, but then two monitors were clear. So what I did is I unplugged all the monitors and moved them aside and I just kept one monitor and it was a monitor that I had been using a few years ago before I purchased that other monitor. And that monitor is actually this one right over here. And when I look through it with the polarized sunglasses, it is a very dark color. And so it's really hard to see what's on the screen. So I started using that and just after a day of only using that monitor, I noticed my eye strain started to get significantly better. And so just after a couple weeks of doing that, I noticed that my eye strain was almost completely gone. And that's how it's been for the last couple of months. And I still don't fully understand it myself, but it has to do something with the polarization of the light which is coming out of the monitors and the vertical light and the horizontal light and how your eyes react to that different types of light. So you can definitely do more research about it if you want to, and I'll have some links in the video description to some articles which talk about it. And what's interesting about this is that with most monitors, if you rotate the polarized sunglasses by 90 degrees, then that will actually flip the effect. So for all these monitors here, these monitors don't cause me eye strain, but if I rotate the polarized sunglasses and look through the sunglasses, they now become clear when they are rotated. And so what I actually did with my monitor, which I had used for two and a half years, the one which was causing me a lot of eye strain, that is the one right behind me. And so what I did is actually rotated it by 90 degrees. And so I now use it as a vertical monitor. So it's great for like reading articles and doing things like that. And so now when I look through it, through the glasses, it is now a dark color. And so that's the main reason that I wanted to make this video because I've seen different eye doctors and I've done so much research online and I never figured this out. I just happened to stumble upon that Reddit post a few months ago. So I want to spread the word and let people know about this. I want to be able to share that information with other people if other people are dealing with the same problem. Now I will be talking over the experience I have with the eye doctors and the vision therapists which I have seen, but when I figured this out I emailed my vision therapist and I told her about my findings and I told her that my eye strain has gotten so much better and so I'm hoping that they will implement this information when they are helping other patients who are dealing with eye strain. So just to summarize, the types of monitors that cause me eye strain are when they still look clear and you can still see what's on the screen when you are looking through the screen with polarized sunglasses and they have to be polarized sunglasses because normal sunglasses won't work. Now I've looked at different screens and I found that there are some screens which are just completely clear and you can see through them and 
and it doesn't matter whether you rotate the glasses or not. Um, I've been to an electronic store and they had some laptops set up and I just looked at all of them through my glasses and I looked at all the different laptops and most of those laptops in the electronic store were clear. So I expect with those monitors on those laptops that they would cause my eye strain whether they were rotated 90 degrees or not. So to fix this, of course, I wanted to find a nice big monitor which I could use as my main monitor. So I went to an electronic store called Staples and I took my polarized sunglasses into the electronic store and they had monitors set up. And so I just went around and just looked at all the monitors and I looked through my polarized sunglasses and there was one monitor which was the size that I wanted and the resolution that I wanted, which was a dark color. So I purchased that monitor and that is the monitor which I'm now using and that monitor has not caused me any eye strain. Now, unfortunately, my Huion screen drawing tablet, which I've used for many years for doing digital sculpting, that monitor also causes me eye strain. So for the time being, I'm not using it and I'm hoping to find some sort of display drawing tablet in the future that I can use in my setup. But for now, if I do want to use a drawing tablet, I do have a Wacom pad tablet. And so that's just a tablet which I can put on my desk and then I can draw on the pad tablet and I can look up at my monitor. And I don't like using those pad tablets quite as much because the hand and eye coordination is a little bit weird. So I don't like it quite as much, but it's what I'm going to do for now to avoid eye strain. And then the laptop, which I've been using in the past, and also a laptop, which I bought more recently, both of those laptops, unfortunately cause eye strain. So I could plug an external monitor into them while I'm working on them, but I don't use laptops very much. I usually just use laptops when I'm traveling so that I can get some work done. So for now, I'm just going to deal with the eye strain when I'm using a laptop because I don't use a laptop very often. And then when it comes to my phone, unfortunately, my phone does cause eye strain and it doesn't matter whether I rotate the screen back and forth like the monitors. Uh, my phone just always has a clear color when I'm looking through the glasses. But just like with my laptop, I don't use my phone very often. I just use it for short periods of time, maybe to use an app or to send a text or something like that. But I mostly just use my computer. So it really doesn't cause me any eye strain because I only look at it for a very short period of time. So if you're having this problem as well, and if you want to replace your monitors, then my best advice for you would be to go to an electronics store and actually look at the monitors which are actually plugged in because the monitor actually has to be turned on in order to tell if it's going to cause you eye strain. But if you are looking for a monitor, I am going to be going over the four different monitors which I have, which don't cause me eye strain. And so you could look into buying those monitors or you could just go to some electronic store and see if there's any monitors there. So the oldest monitor which I have I actually bought from a used electronic store and it is a Dell monitor. However, it's pretty old and again I bought it used. So I don't know the actual type of Dell monitor which it is, but I did take a picture of the back of the monitor and so I'll throw that image right there up there on the screen and you can maybe punch in those numbers and try to look it up online. I'm not sure. Usually monitors have like numbers and letters which go along with that type of monitor. And so you may be able to find that type of monitor online. However, it's an older monitor, so it probably isn't being produced anymore. Now, the next monitor, which I'll be going over is the one which actually was causing the eye strain. However, I now have that monitor behind me and I rotated it by 90 degrees. And so now it doesn't cause me eye strain. So that monitor was the Dell UltraSharp U2719DX. It's a 27 inch monitor and the resolution is 2560 by 1440. So it is a 2K resolution monitor. So I'll throw up the product information up there on the screen. I bought that monitor from Amazon and it is a great looking monitor. It's really sharp looking and it looks really nice and the colors are great, but it was causing me eye strain. So I rotated it by 90 degrees and I still use it but I just use it as a vertical monitor. All right, so the third monitor is the other one which is behind me, and that one is the Dell S2421H, and it's a 24 inch monitor, and the resolution is 1080p. So this monitor doesn't cause any eye strain. However, if I wanted to rotate it over by 90 degrees and make it a vertical monitor, it would cause me eye strain. But right now I just have it as a horizontal monitor, and so that monitor is great. It doesn't cause any eye strain. And I also bought that monitor from Amazon. All right, so the fourth monitor is my drawing tablet, which I used to use, and that is the Huion Canvas GT191. 
So that was a really great drawing tablet and I used it for many years and it still works. Um, so I did really like it. However, it did cause me eye strain. If I were to rotate it by 90 degrees, then it wouldn't cause any eye strain. However, sculpting and drawing on a vertical monitor would just be kind of weird. And it wouldn't really work if I were going to film a video tutorial because on YouTube videos are horizontal. So right now I'm just not using it. All right, and then the monitor, which I recently bought from Staples, which is the electronics store, that is the one right here. It's my main monitor. And that one is good. It isn't causing me any eye strain. And that monitor is the AOC Q32 E2N. And it's a 31 and a half inch monitor and it's 2K resolution. And again, I bought it from Staples, which is an electronics store nearby where I live. And then when it comes to phone screens, any phones which I have looked at are clear. And so as far as I know, any phone would cause me eye strain, but I don't use my phone very often, so it's not really a problem. And then when it comes to laptops, it really does depend on the laptop. Some laptops which I've looked at are clear, so they would cause eye strain. And then some laptops which I've looked at are clear either way. So again, I went to that electronic store Staples and I looked at some different laptops which were on display and some of those laptops were clear whether I rotated the sunglasses or not. So it really does seem hard to find a laptop which won't cause me eye strain, but I do just use a desktop computer most of the time, so that's not really a big issue. And then when it comes to TV screens, I don't actually have a TV screen. I really don't watch TV or movies that often, but any TVs which I have looked at in any electronic stores have also been clear. Hopefully you can find a TV at some electronic store which won't be an issue. But when I would watch a movie on a projector screen, those wouldn't cause me eye strain because a projector screen is shooting out the light and then the light is bouncing off of a canvas. And so that's not going to be the same type of polarized light which would cause me eye strain with a normal monitor. So if I'm ever watching a movie from a projector or a projector screen, that doesn't cause any eye strain. All right, so I'm now moving on to my second tip to avoid eye strain, which is to actually get your eyes checked by an eye doctor because it may be that you have some sort of eye issues maybe your eyes don't focus together or maybe you're farsighted or nearsighted or maybe something else is going on so if you're dealing with a lot of eye strain you could definitely go to an eye doctor and get that checked out so I went to an eye doctor a couple of years ago when my eye strain got much worse, and it turns out that I am slightly farsighted. So because I'm farsighted, it's easy for me to look at things which are far away. However, when I'm looking at things which are very close up, that is a bit harder for my eyes. So after going to the eye doctor, I got a prescription, and they do help my eyes to not work as hard when I'm looking at things close up. Now I've still dealt with a lot of eye strain even while wearing these glasses, but they do make it a bit easier when I'm working on the computer for many hours. So if you are having eye strain, then it may be as simple as just getting some reading glasses or maybe getting your eyes checked out and actually getting a proper prescription and then getting some glasses made for you which work for your eyes. Now if you are getting glasses for the first time, when you first wear them, they might feel a little bit weird. So I would recommend really just giving it a couple of weeks and letting your eyes adjust to the glasses because I remember when I first got these glasses, it just felt really weird to wear them. Everything looked almost like a little bit zoomed in and it just felt kind of weird. And it did actually make my eyes feel slightly worse at the very beginning, just because my eyes were kind of getting used to them and they felt a little bit weird. But after wearing them for a couple of weeks, then they actually just felt fine. So when I first got these glasses, they helped a lot. And I thought that that was probably the root cause of my problem because my eye strain almost completely went away. However, just after six months of wearing my glasses, Glasses, then my eye strain got worse again and so I actually went back to the same eye doctor and I thought maybe my prescription had maybe changed but she said that my prescription hadn't changed and she thought that I maybe just needed a little bit of stronger glasses to make it even easier for my eyes to look at things close up. So I got a new prescription and it was basically the same thing but it was just slightly stronger and so I used that new prescription of glasses for a month but I actually felt like it made my eye strain worse and so after a month of using that strong prescription I just went back to this prescription and this was my actual prescription that I had originally gotten and that worked much better and so my eye strain did get a bit better after switching back to my proper prescription so if you're wondering if that may be the problem for you it may be it may be that your prescription has changed if you are already wearing glasses so just going to your eye doctor and getting that checked out would be a good idea but from my experience just bumping up the strength of the glasses actually made my eye strain worse because it wasn't actually the right prescription that my eyes needed. All right, so we're now getting into the next thing which really helped my eye strain, and that is vision therapy. 
So after seeing that first eye doctor a couple of times and not really seeing any improvement, I decided to go to a different eye doctor, and at this place they specialize in vision therapy. So vision therapy is different exercises that you do with your eyes to improve your eyes performance. So it's sort of like physical therapy or it's sort of like a workout for your eyes to improve your eyes performance. Now for everyone who does vision therapy, they're going to have different exercises depending on what problem they have for their eyes. So for some people's eyes, their eyes may not track together when they're looking at things and so that could cause eye irritation or eye strain or it could make things blurry and some people may be nearsighted and other people might be farsighted like I am. And so if you do want to try vision therapy, your exercises are going to be really different depending on what problems you may have with your eyes. So I went to that eye doctor and they took a look at my eyes and they checked my eye performance and what they noticed is that my eyes were converging way too much. And so even though I could see everything on the screen okay, everything was clear, when I was looking at the screen my eyes would converge too much. And so it's actually called convergence excess. So divergence is when your eyes go away from each other and convergence is when your eyes come together. And so I had convergence excess which means my eyes were converging or coming together too much. And so it's sort of like my eyes were cross-eyeing, but just by a very small amount. However, that was causing me a lot of eye strain because my eye muscles were having to work way too hard to bring my eyes together. And that's why I was having all that pain around my eyes. So I started doing vision therapy at the beginning of 2022, and I started off by going to vision therapy once a week. And then after doing vision therapy for a few months, I just went down to doing vision therapy every other week. So I would drive over to the eye doctor, and in the same building they had an area where they would do the vision therapy. And so they hooked me up with a vision therapist, and so once a week we would do vision therapy exercises to improve my eye performance. And so we would do different exercises which would help to relax my eyes, and also bring my eyes apart so that when I was looking at things close up, my eyes wouldn't converge way too much. And then while I was doing vision therapy, they also also gave me at-home exercises to do every day. So every morning I would go through a list of different exercises, some different eye stretches and exercises that I would do, and it would usually take maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and then once a week I would go to the actual vision therapy. So I noticed that my eyes immediately improved after doing vision therapy. And so after about six months of doing vision therapy, I ended the vision therapy, and I just went back to doing at-home exercises. However, just when I finished the vision therapy in the middle of two 2022, I immediately noticed that my eyes started to feel worse. And so I kept on doing the maintenance exercises that the vision therapist gave me, and the maintenance exercises did help, but I noticed that my eyes slowly felt worse and worse. So another six months went by, and so then it was the very end of 2022, and my eyes felt just as bad again. So I went back to the same eye doctor, and they took a look at my eye performance, and they said that my eye performance had gotten worse since I hadn't been going to vision therapy. So I started doing vision therapy again, and for half of 2023, I did vision therapy, so for about another six months. Now just like before, when I started vision therapy, my eyes did feel a bit better, but then the vision therapy actually started to not help, and so my eyes weren't really getting worse, but they also weren't getting any better. So after doing vision therapy for about six months, I just decided to stop because it wasn't really helping. So I continued to do the at-home exercises even after stopping vision therapy, although I really felt like they weren't helping anymore. And then just a couple of months ago, that's when I found out about the polarization effect that can happen with certain monitors. And if you skip down to this part of the video, then definitely check the timestamps and go watch that part of the video. It's at the starting of the video. So after switching out my monitors to better monitors which don't cause me eye strain, I don't really Really feel like I need to do that much vision therapy anymore. I still do some of the at-home exercises, but I really don't feel like I need to do them that much anymore because I think the main root cause was that the monitors were causing eye strain. However, definitely improving my eye performance was helpful, and so I'm still doing some exercises to make sure that my eyes don't come together too much when I'm looking at monitors. Alright, so the next thing which really helped to prevent my eye strain is a blue light filter on your computer monitor. So this is something that I did read about online and I also asked my eye doctor about it. 
and my eye doctor said that the actual blue colored light, which is coming from your computer monitor, can irritate your eyes. So my eye doctor recommended that I install some type of program on my computer which blocks blue light. And so basically the program will give the screen a kind of yellowish, orangish tinted color. So I tried this out and it's made a big difference. And so now when I use a normal computer monitor that doesn't have some sort of blue light filter, I immediately start to feel some kind of stinging feeling in my eyes. And so using a blue light filter has really helped to make my eyes not sting quite as much. So there are many different programs you could get on your computer to block the blue light. One program that my doctor recommended that I check out is called f.lux, but there are many different programs. You can just look up some kind of program to block blue light. Now, I use the Linux Mint operating system on my computer, and so within Linux Mint, there are these things called applets, and you can add the applets to your taskbar on Linux Mint. And so I installed an applet called QRedshift, and QRedshift has different custom settings. You can change the brightness of the monitor, and you can also change the colors and a few other things. So right behind me, you can see the difference of the normal monitor without the blue light filter. So this is how the colors just look normally on most monitors. And then here it is with the blue light filter turned on. So again, here's before and then here's after. So when you first start using a blue light filter on your computer, it may look a little bit weird, but you will definitely get used to it quite fast. And so as I mentioned, now when I'm not using my blue light filter, my eyes immediately start to feel kind of strained and I get a stinging feeling in my eyes. So it's really helpful for managing my eye strain. Now because I am a 3D artist, I do need to be able to see accurate colors and do color correction. So when I am finishing up an artwork, I will just turn the blue light filter off so that I can see the accurate colors and I'll do the color correction that I need to do for my artworks or my videos. And then once I'm finished, I'll just turn the blue light blocker back on. Now some computer monitors also have a blue light filter blocked in, so you may be able to use the actual buttons on your computer monitor and you may be able to adjust the colors that way. However, I do want easy control. I want to be able to adjust all of my monitors at the same time and I want to be able to quickly turn them on and off. And so that is why I use the Q Redshift applet on Linux Mint. And I've looked up other programs and there are definitely lots of other free programs that you can get and you should be able to find one for your operating system. Now, another thing which you can do to get the same effect is to get blue light blocking glasses. So when I I first heard about this a few years ago, I bought some UV blocking glasses or blue light blocking glasses. However, the ones that I bought were clear. And I found that these glasses did not help at all, even though they were advertised as blue light blocking or UV blocking, because they're clear, they really don't do anything. So if you're going to get some type of blue light blocking glasses, then I would definitely not recommend getting the clear ones. I'd recommend getting the ones which actually have a strong orange or yellow tint, something like this. And I know it might look kind of weird and it might make everything look really weird, but I'm sure you'll get used to it. Now, I haven't actually tried using one of those orange tinted or yellow tinted glasses because I instead just use the program on my computer to make my monitors yellow or orange tinted and to block the blue light. But you could definitely try purchasing one of those if you just wanna have something that you can easily take on and off and it should have the same effect. But again, I definitely wouldn't recommend getting any of these blue light blocking or UV light blocking glasses if they are clear like this because this was just a complete waste of money and it didn't do anything. And these glasses also don't have any prescription. These glasses are just clear glasses, but they were advertised as blue light blocking. All right, so the next tip is another really helpful one. Again, it didn't fix the root cause of my eye strain, but it is very helpful, and that is the 20-20-20 rule. So this is a very common one that you may have heard on lots of videos online about eye strain. They always talk about it, and it seems to be on every article about eye strain. And whenever I've seen eye doctors, they always tell me about the 20 20 20 rule. So if you haven't heard about the 20-20-20 rule, basically it's that every 20 minutes you look at least 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. And of course you can make it longer if you want to. So every 20 minutes you could look really far away for like a minute, but it's basically just the act of taking regular breaks. And I do find this very helpful to give my eyes a break. 
So every 20 minutes or so, or if it's more helpful for you, you could even do it every 10 minutes. You can just take a break from the computer and you can look at least 20 feet away or farther. I find that it's actually helpful to look out a window, maybe just look out at nature and really just try to relax your eyes and look far away. Because after looking really close up, it's helpful for your eyes to have a break. Now, when you're working on a computer and when you're focused on a task, it can be really hard to remember to take a break every 20 minutes. And so that is why I use a program called Break Timer, which sends a notification on my computer screen to remind me to take a break. So there are many computer break reminder programs that you could get. Again, just look some up online and I'm sure there are many free programs that you can get. But the one that I recommend is called Break Timer. It is a free open source program and it should work on Windows, Linux, or Mac. And the program is also really customizable because you can tell the program how many times you want to take a break. So you could take a break every five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or even a half an hour. And then you can also control how long the break is. So if you want to do 20 seconds or 30 seconds or maybe even take a minute at break. And then what's also cool about this program is you can have it pop up on your screen. And this is helpful because if I just have a little notification on the corner of my screen, if I'm working on a task, I may just ignore it because I just think, okay, I'll just take a break in a couple of minutes once I'm done with this task. But then I end up just completely forgetting about the break and I just keep on working on my project and then more time goes by and then my eyes might get kind of strained because I'm not taking a break. So how I've set up the break timer program is it sends a big pop-up screen on my computer screen and I can't actually work on my computer because it's covering up my entire screen. And I have it set for 20 seconds so what I do is I stand up and I kind of fix my posture. It's also good to stand up every now and then because that's better for your posture and it's better for your overall health. So I take off my glasses, I stand up and I look far away. I look out a window and I just try to relax my eyes. And so I do that every 20 minutes for about 20 seconds. So that is the 20, 20, 20 rule. It's very useful. And so I would definitely recommend it if you're having eye strain. So you can check out the break timer program. Link is in the description if you'd like to use that same program that I use. All right, so the next thing that may be affecting your eye strain is dry eyes. And a common reason why you can get dry eyes when you're working on a computer is because you actually blink less when you're working on a computer. So I've done research online, and it turns out that when people are really focused on a task on the computer, they tend to blink less often. And when you blink less often, then your eyes can get a bit dried out, and so then that can cause eye strain. So simply remembering to blink a bit more often can really help, and also so when you're taking breaks, if you're using the 20-20-20 rule, just remember to blink a few times, maybe even close your eyes for a few seconds, and just make sure that your eyes stay nice and wet. Because when you blink, it helps to moisturize your eyes. Now, when I was seeing an eye doctor, they asked me if I thought I had dry eyes, and I really didn't know. I was having a lot of eye strain and eye irritation, but I wasn't sure if I was actually having dry eyes. So they actually did a test. They put something in my eyes, like a little liquid, and it was able to show them if I had dry eyes. And they said I didn't have any dry eyes, but they did say I could try using some eye drops and see if it helps. So I did purchase some basic eye drops and I tried putting them in my eyes, but I found that they didn't help at all. So I don't think that I have a problem with dry eyes, but if you are having a problem with dry eyes, then that could cause eye strain. So just remember to blink more, also take more breaks. And then you could also try just purchasing some eye drops and putting them in your eyes when you have some eye strain. All right, so my next tip for avoiding eye strain is to play place the monitor at the correct distance and height. So if the computer monitor is too close to my eyes, then my eyes have to converge together to focus on the monitor. And so that can cause eye strain. So I have found over the years that putting my monitor farther back has definitely helped. However, if you put your monitor too far away, then I found that it can also cause a bit of eye strain because if it's too far away, then you may be slouching forward and you may squint to kind of see what's on the screen and it may be a bit hard to read stuff on the screen. So I would say just play around with the distance and see how your eyes feel. However, I've found that putting the monitor about an arm's length away is a good amount or maybe a little bit farther. So currently with my setup, when I'm sitting straight at the monitor, when I put out my hand, my hand just can't reach the monitor, maybe there's a couple inches left before I can touch the monitor. And for me, that is a good distance away. So if you reach out, you shouldn't be able to touch your monitor, or maybe you can just barely touch your monitor. I think that is a pretty good distance. And I've talked to eye doctors and my vision therapists, and they think that is a pretty good distance as well. 
Now I find if I put it farther away, then I kind of slouch forward, I kind of move forward, my posture gets worse, and then I also kind of have to squint and I have to work harder to see things on the screen. So I find that putting it farther away doesn't really help. Also, if you get a larger monitor, then that would probably help because if it's a larger monitor, things can just be a little bit bigger. So this is a pretty big monitor. It's I think it's about 32 inches. So you could consider getting a bigger monitor and then moving it a little farther back. Now, when it comes to the monitor height, I find that if it is too low, then your posture can be worse because you're kind of slouching over and your head is looking down. And so I find that that is bad for your posture, but I find that if the monitor is too high, then it can kind of hurt your neck because you're looking too high up. And I find that when your eyes are looking up for a long period of time, that can cause eye strain. So for me, I found that I should be able to look forward and then just slightly down. So with how I have my current monitor, when I look straight ahead, I I can see about the top of the monitor. So my eyes naturally look at about the top of the monitor when I'm just looking straight forward. So then to see things on the screen, my eyes just look slightly down. And I find that that's best for my eyes looking straight, but slightly down. So my eyes are pretty much straight, but just a little bit farther down. So that works best for me. So you can just play around with the monitor height. If your monitor is too low, you could maybe put your monitor stand on a box or maybe some books. And if your monitor is too high, you might be able to adjust it with the monitor stand stand, or you could also switch out your monitor stand. Many monitors have a stand which can be unscrewed, and you could buy some sort of adjustable monitor stand and screw the monitor into that stand, and you can adjust it and just get it to the height that you like. Now some other things which can help your eye strain is changing the text size. So if your text size is too big or too small, it may be hard to read. So on your operating system, there should be settings to change the text size. So just change the text size so that it's pretty easy to read, but it's also not too big. And if you are using an internet browser, on most internet browsers, you can just hold down the control key and then you can scroll the middle mouse wheel and that should change the entire size of the web browser. So you can use that as well if you're reading an article online. Now another thing which you can use for eye strain is to try light mode and dark mode. So generally operating systems do have different themes. So you can try a light mode and a dark mode. Also different websites like YouTube have a light theme and a dark theme. And many web browsers also have themes that you can change. So I have tried dark mode. So that is where it's a black background with white text. But I actually find that that's just a little bit weird to read. It just doesn't feel very natural because naturally when you're maybe reading a book, there is white paper and then there is black text. Text. So I find dark theme just a little bit weird, and I don't think it really makes my eye strain worse, but I don't think it helps either. So I found that light mode works best. So for most things, I just have light mode turned on. There's a few programs that I do kind of like dark mode, like Blender uses dark mode, but for most programs, I just use light mode. So you can definitely play around with light mode and dark mode and see if you like a black background with white text or a white background with black text better. And another thing that some programs and some websites offer is an auto dark mode and with auto dark mode during the day it will use light mode but then when it gets dark outside and maybe you want to turn off some of the lights in the evening and make it a little bit dimmer then it'll turn on dark mode and so you could definitely try that because if you're using the computer late at night when it's dark if everything is very bright that might irritate your eyes because it's so bright so you could switch over to dark mode at night and then during the day use light mode so that's some things you can try out now another thing which can really help is adjusting the screen screen brightness. So the best thing to do is to adjust the screen brightness to about the same brightness as your room. So if the room is very dark, but then the monitor is super bright, then that is a ton of very bright light. And so there's a lot of contrast. And so I find that can definitely irritate your eyes. However, if it's the opposite way around, so if it's daytime and it's very light in your room, but then your monitor is really dark, then you may lean forward and you may squint and it may be hard to see what's going on on the screen. So again, I think the best thing to do is to just adjust the monitor brightness to the brightness of your room. So if you have a very bright monitor, you may never want to turn it all the way up. But then if it's darker in the evening, you may want to turn it down a bit. And then during the day, you could make it a bit brighter. And the buttons on the actual monitor do have settings to adjust the brightness. However, that's kind of hard to use. And if you're adjusting your brightness throughout the day, it can be kind of annoying and take a lot of time to adjust the brightness. So I would again recommend getting some kind of program which can adjust the screen brightness.
same brightness, or if you're using a laptop, a laptop will usually have buttons which can adjust the screen brightness really quickly. So the applet on my computer called Q Redshift has a slider so I can very quickly adjust the brightness. So usually during the morning, I'll turn it up a little bit, then throughout the day, I'll turn it almost all the way up or all the way up, and then in the evening when things are a bit darker, I'll turn it down a bit. And then another thing which can help is to avoid glare. So if there is a really bright light, maybe a light in your room, or maybe there's sunlight coming in from a window, if that sunlight is bouncing off your computer monitor, it could cause a lot of glare. And if your computer screen has a lot of glare, then again, you might be squinting or you might be moving your head forward to try to see what's on the screen, and it might just cause some eye irritation. So if your monitor is having a lot of glare with maybe sunlight or a light, you could try turning off some lights, you could maybe move some lights around. So just try to avoid glare if there is lots of glare on your computer monitor. All right, so my next tip is to avoid doing any activities on your phone and doing them on your computer instead. And this is really important for a few reasons. For one thing, I find that phone screens can cause eye strain because of the way that the monitor is created. So again, going back to what I talked about earlier, when you're looking at a screen with polarized sunglasses, the screen should look very dark. But I found when you're looking at phones, usually the phones don't have that effect and so that causes eye strain. But as well as that, phone screens are very small and you have to look at them really close up. Because if you have your phone as far away as your monitor, it's probably gonna be hard to read stuff. And usually when you're using your phone, you're holding it in your hand, and so it's not very far away. So I find that using a phone definitely increases the amount of eye strain. So I would say do as many things as you can on your computer instead of your phone. And also when you're using your phone, you probably don't have as good posture because you're probably holding your phone with your hand and you're probably leaning over and you're looking really Really close up so that can definitely cause eye strain. So a few tips for using your phone less is to use websites instead of apps. So many apps which you may use like social media and other apps, those apps usually also have a website and so if you can you can use the website on your computer instead of using it on the app. And when you are texting someone, you may actually be able to set up texting so that you can text on your computer. So I believe there are a few programs or a few websites that you can use where you can actually sync up your messages on your phone to your computer. And so I have an LG phone, so it has Android. And so Google actually does have a messaging system where I can actually text from my phone, but it's actually using my computer. And I believe on Apple, you can do this as well. So if you have an Apple computer and an Apple phone, then you should be able to use the messages on your computer as well. Or if you're texting and messaging someone for a longer period of time, maybe just ask them if they could do a phone call instead. And that way, while you're talking to them on the phone, you could even be looking out a window. And then that way you aren't even looking at a screen. And if you're reading books or articles, instead of reading it on your phone, just consider reading it on your computer so that you have better posture and it's farther away. Or if you're reading a book, you could even consider just getting a physical copy so that you don't have to look at screens at all. And you can actually look at good old paper. And then I also did mention getting a blue light filter for your computer and you can also do that for your phone as well and that is really helpful. So there are lots of programs on the Google Play Store or the App Store and you should just be able to download a blue light filter app and it'll make your phone kind of have a yellowish orangey tinted color and that can really help with eye strain. And if you're writing down notes again instead of using your phone you could just use a computer or you could just switch to good old pencil and paper. Now I do have a few other lifestyle tips which can help with eye strain. So one really important thing is getting enough sleep because just like your body needs rest, your eyes also need rest. So if you're not getting enough sleep, then that could definitely cause eye strain. I find that my eyes just feel tired when I don't get enough sleep. So I find that I really need a good eight hours of sleep. And I think most people need about seven to nine hours of sleep. So if you aren't prioritizing getting good sleep and getting enough sleep every night, then that's definitely something to consider because if you're not getting enough sleep, your eyes can feel tired. Now avoiding stress is another really important thing which can help with eye strain. So I find that when I'm stressed out, I tend to squint more and I kind of tense up and that can definitely cause a lot more eye strain. Now I am actually not very good at managing stress. I really just don't feel like I'm good at managing stress. So I'm not really a good person to come to to figure out how to manage stress. But of course there are lots of resources online and videos that you can watch on managing stress. But something that I can recommend is just try to notice things in your life 
life that does cause stress and try to react to those situations differently and also try to avoid situations that you can avoid which causes stress. Of course, we can't just avoid everything in our life which causes stress, but try to notice what is causing stress and maybe learn to react to it differently so you don't get quite as stressed. And also, when you are stressed, maybe make a list of things which you know can help you to de-stress. So some things that really help me to de-stress are spending time with friends and family. I also find that exercising really helps me to de-stress and also listening to your favorite music can really help to de-stress as well. I also like drawing for a hobby because I am an artist, so I find that drawing and sketching can help me to de-stress. And also things that make you laugh can really help you to relax and de-stress, so maybe listening to some stand-up comedy or a funny podcast or something that can help you to relax and de-stress. Now when it comes to your diet, I know that eating a healthy, nutritious diet definitely can help your overall health. I don't really know how much it would affect eye strain. I have been eating healthy for a very long time, and I do really prioritize eating a very healthy diet. Now there are some supplements that I've seen online which say that they can help with eye strain, so it's something you could look into or maybe ask an eye doctor or a doctor about. Now, a supplement which I heard about which can help with overall eye health is bilberry. So just to try it out because I was trying out so many things and I wanted to find a cure to my eye strain, I decided just to try some bilberry. So I did take a bilberry supplement for two months and I didn't find that it helped at all, but it may help someone else depending on what problem you have. So it is something to consider, maybe improving your diet, maybe looking into supplements. However, the bilberry that I tried didn't really help, and I haven't tried any other supplements. And we're getting towards the end of this video, so the final thing that I want to talk about is simply spending less time on a computer screen. So I know that that is very hard to do in this modern age where it seems like everything is done on screens. So we work on screens, then our entertainment is on screens, you know, movies and video games are on screens, social media is on screens, and I of course look at screens a lot for my work, and many people might have video calls for their work or video calls with friends and family and also a lot of doctors these days are doing video calls online and we even do a lot of shopping online so even though so many things these days are online there's definitely a lot of things that you can do to limit your time on a screen so one lifestyle which can really help you to spend less time on screens is called digital minimalism and there is a book called digital minimalism and the book was written by Cal Newport and I actually listened to to the audiobook version of the book, and I can highly recommend it. It's a really great book for spending less time on computers and also just spending less time on the internet. So to best describe what the book covers, I'm gonna read a quote which I believe is from the book, and the quote is, digital minimalism, a philosophy of technology use in which you focused your online time in a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value, and then happily miss out on everything else. So in the book, he basically talks about just finding the things which you do online, which actually benefit your life and really give you a lot of value and really keep you very productive. And then everything else you just get rid of. So maybe you'd still use your computer for work. Maybe you'd still use the internet for a few social medias that you actually find are really beneficial. But then other things like other social media that you find waste your time, video games, movies, other entertainment, and just things that waste your time, you just cut those out and you find other activities like maybe outdoor activities or getting together with people in real life and just doing other things which are healthier and not on a computer. And again, I listened to the entire audiobook and I can highly recommend the book Digital Minimalism, so definitely consider checking it out. And another thing you can do to spend less time on a computer is to switch out tasks on a computer that you can instead do off a computer. So one thing that you could do is actually just use a real paper calendar instead of a calendar on your computer. You could also just go shopping at real stores instead of shopping online if you can. You could also try to plan more real life activities with friends and family. So instead of just doing a video call or just texting or communicating digitally, actually try to get together with people in real life. And maybe instead of texting someone, you could actually call them up on the phone and that way you can look at a screen less. And as I did mention, I'm an artist and so I like to do drawing and I have done a little bit of digital drawing on the computer, but to avoid eye strain, I do most of my drawing with a good old pencil and paper and I actually find that I like that better. And so if you like to do digital drawing or digital paint or digital sculpting, you could try switching to traditional sculpting or traditional painting or drawing. And you might find that you actually enjoy those more than doing them on the computer. You can also consider making
making your phone less distracting. So if you're one of those people who's kind of addicted to social media and you always have to check your posts and check your social media, then consider maybe deleting the app or even deleting your account just so that you're not wasting as much time. There are so many other activities that you can do. There are so many different sports and crafts and exercising and doing things outside and getting together with friends and family. There's so many other much more healthy, much more beneficial activities that you can do in your free time. Another thing you can really do to spend less time on screens is to not watch movies or watch YouTube while you're eating. So it seems like these days so many people have to watch a YouTube video or turn on a show or scroll through their social media while they're eating. And you really don't have to do that. And I actually try to be fully present when I'm eating, so I just try to have no distraction, I don't watch any videos, I don't look at any screens, and I just enjoy eating my food. And you can also read a physical book instead of reading a book on the computer. Or if you like listening to audiobooks, I love listening to audiobooks, you could find some audiobooks and listen to those instead of reading on a screen. And of course, getting together with people in real life can be really helpful, so instead of just texting with someone on a group chat, or instead of just doing a video call, maybe actually actually plan a real life meetup if you're able to do that with your friends or family. And also just finding other hobbies and activities which you enjoy which are off a screen can really help. So I made a list of things that I like to do in my free time which are not on a screen. So doing traditional art like traditional drawing, also going on day trips like maybe going to the beach, going to parks or forests, or exploring nature nearby where you live. Also spending time with pets if you have pets. Also just going around to local parks, I actually love going to different different parks and playing on the playgrounds, going to church events or getting involved in service projects, spending quality time with friends and family in real life, and also you can get involved in different sports or crafts or even gardening or many different things like that. All right, so we are nearing the end of the video. So to finish off the video, I wanted to summarize everything which you can do which can really help to improve your eye strain, and these tips have really helped me. So the first thing and the most important thing is to use a computer monitor which has a dark tint to them when you are looking through them with polarized sunglasses. And then another thing you can do is get your eyes checked by an eye doctor and address any eye issues. Another thing you can do is try reading glasses or get a prescription of glasses if you need them. And just using some basic reading glasses can make it easier for your eyes to look at things close up. You could also consider doing vision therapy, so you could ask your eye doctor if they know about vision therapy or try to find a vision therapist in your area. Also getting a blue light filter for your screen, so for your phone and for your computer, that is super helpful as well. Or you could also purchase some orangish or yellowish tinted glasses and that can help to block blue light. Also the 20-20-20 rule is super helpful for taking regular breaks. And definitely check out that program that I mentioned called Break Timer. The link will be in the description and that program is really great for reminding you to take breaks. And then also blinking more often to avoid dry eyes. And also if you do have dry eyes, you can consider using some eye drops. And then also making sure that your monitors are far enough away and making sure that they're the correct height. You can also make the text size larger or smaller so that they're easier to read. And you can also try dark theme or light theme and see what works better for your eyes. Also adjusting the screen brightness to the same brightness in the room is really helpful as well. And also avoiding glare, so if your monitor does have some glare from a light or maybe sunlight, maybe adjusting your monitor, maybe moving it somewhere else so that you don't have glare off your monitor. And also switching out activities on your phone and doing them on your computer instead can really help because when you're using your phone, your phone is really close up, so that can cause a lot more eye strain. And then getting enough sleep, avoiding stress, and eating a very healthy diet, those things can all just help your general health, which can in turn help your eyes. And then finally, just spending less time on a computer, so adapting digital minimalism. I highly recommend reading the book Digital Minimalism. Also limit the amount of video games, movies, and social media. You can also switch out stuff which you can do traditionally instead of digitally. So for instance, just getting a normal paper calendar and using that instead of a calendar on your computer. And also doing more stuff in person, so actually getting together with friends and family in real life, that can be great as well, instead of doing a video call or a group chat. And also just be present with your food while you're eating. You don't need to be scrolling through social media or watching YouTube or watching a show while you're eating. Just be present with your food. If you're eating with other people, you can have a nice conversation. Or if you're eating by yourself, just try to be fully present with your food and really enjoy the meal. 
And I find that when I'm being fully present with my food, I tend to digest better and I'm more satisfied at the end of the meal and the food actually tastes better because you're being fully present with your food. And also it can help to not overeat as well. And also just getting into different activities and different hobbies which are off of a screen. So you could get into exercising or working out, you could get into some type of sport or some type of craft or just some other hobby. There are really so many things that you can get into. I really enjoy working out, I enjoy running, I also really enjoy kayaking and bike riding, and I like going to different parks and also exploring different nature areas nearby where I live. So this is going to wrap it up for the video, so if anything in this video has helped you out, then definitely let me know. I'd really like to know if these things help you out. And also, if you have something which I haven't mentioned in the video which has helped your eye strain, then definitely let us know in the comments and share it with everyone. Because I do still deal with some eye strain, so if you have any tips for me, then I'd definitely be up to hearing that. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, so I hope this really helps you out, and thank you all for watching.